In today's video, we'll be going over a pretty big PlayStation Store leak of a huge demo that is possibly coming and another game that looks to have been revealed. We'll go over all of that. Also, Telltale Games is back. We know they're working on The Wolf Among Us too, but how are they going to be developing games in the future? Well, it might be a little bit different than what we're used to. Yakuza Like a Dragon has gotten a brand new gameplay trailer. And Dead AJ, turn-based combat zombie apocalypse roguelite has seen a quiet release on the PlayStation Store. I want to give that game some much-needed attention, and we'll talk that at the end of this video. But first up, Final Fantasy VII Remake Demo and Pat Upon 2 Remastered PlayStation Store listings have been leaked. The game's tracker on GameStat, which tracks everything that has been added to the PlayStation Store, has added covers for a Final Fantasy VII Remake Demo and the Long Silent Pat Upon 2 Remastered. A demo for Final Fantasy VII Remake has yet to be officially announced by Square Enix, but the PlayStation Store listing all but confirms its existence. Final Fantasy VII Remake is out on March 3rd, 2020, so a demo you would think would come out in January or February, I would personally get the demo out a little before the game actually releases because there is a little bit of skepticism regarding the gameplay and some of the other elements of the game. And there's that audience that has never played Final Fantasy VII, so why not introduce it to them? And with a demo, I think a lot of people would be really enamored with the game that way. And then come March 3rd, the excitement would be through the roof. I think ultimately, even without a demo, Final Fantasy VII Remake is going to sell like gangbusters. I mean, I have constantly said I wish they would market the game as part one because I guarantee you that some people are absolutely going to get duped come March 3rd and think they're getting the entire game, but let's not talk about that right now. If they give us a quality game, even for the portion that is available, I think people will be left satisfied. And that's a demo for the Final Fantasy VII Remake. What's going a little bit under the radar, you'll even see it in some of the headlines and some of the posts. They're not even giving any attention to Pat Upon 2 Remastered, which was announced for the PlayStation 4 all the way back in December of 2017, but has been silent ever since. The the PlayStation Store listing would suggest that that game would be coming very, very soon. Pat Upon 2 is one of the best received PlayStation Portable games of all time. I think IGN gave it like a 9.5 out of 10. It was a great game. Pat Upon in general is a very quirky and very charming game. Getting a chance for a second wind on the PlayStation 4, do I assume it's going to sell incredibly well? No, but I do think some people are going to, you know, notice it. Some people are going to pick it up and then hopefully word does travel a little bit and some other people check it out. Could be a very good PlayStation Plus title in the future as well. Just because the game was rather good, let's hope we see a release of that rather soon. As far as the Final Fantasy VII Remake demo goes, circling back to that, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not this demo is going to be just available for everyone, whether it's going to be a timed demo, because I could easily see something like that, where the demo is only available for a week or so, and then it goes away, and then the only way to play it is come the full game release. I could easily see that. We've been seeing that with a lot of games recently, and I wouldn't be all too shocked if that's the route they go. Alternatively, you could do something like, hey, if you pre-order this game, you'll get a demo for the FF7 remake, but I feel like they've missed timing to do a strategy like that, because if you do that idea of, oh, buy this game and you'll get a demo for the FF7 remake, that would have been great if that was like six months ago, but now the game is just coming out on March 3rd. A demo is not going to be as incredibly enticing from the standpoint of it being uh, bundled it with a game, because most people are just going to say, hey, I don't want that game. March 3rd is right around the corner. I'll just wait for the FF7 remake demo that way, but I'm sure it could still help propel game sales for even an expansion like Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind, if you bundled in the FF7 remake with that, that wouldn't be all too bad of an idea. I'm not sure exactly what other game Square Enix has lined up for early 2020, but you could bundle it with another game and it could do rather well. Again, I think they have missed timing on that. Alright, moving on from that, Telltale Games is really in the news right now. However, it looks like they're going to be changing how they develop games. Telltale Games will no longer develop games episodically. After it was announced that Telltale Games would be brought back to life under new leadership, attention soon turned to the output of the Legendary Studio. What would happen if they bring back Wolf Among Us, which we already know? There's Tales of Borderlands, and there's Game of Thrones. However, all of those games had a similar release pattern in that the games were released episodically. They would come out, and then over the course of a year or so, you would see the episodes trickle out. Some people would buy it right away, other people would wait until the series finishes and then pick it up that way. However, there are now new rumors circulating that the games will not be released episodically. In an interview with Game Daily Biz, Telltale head honcho James Odalis said that while all future releases would follow the episodic release structure for now, and that's something that gamers have been used to, each game or season will now be developed in its entirety from the get-go. This means that when the first episode is released, the rest of the season has already been completed and is ready to go. Hopefully, 
Hopefully that prevents the sort of development delays that have happened with other Telltale titles, and you really want to avoid that. That gives your studio a really bad look if you're aiming for these releases and players have already invested money, they've already played one episode, and then you have to push back other episodes, or God forbid, cancel other episodes. That's an absolute train wreck. He noted, we are creating the stories episodically, but how they will be released is still to be determined. I think the important distinction here is that we will no longer be developing episodically. If we do release the games in episodes, all of them will be ready before the first one hits the store. That would also make you think that the episodes would come out a little bit more consistently, maybe every month, maybe every other month. A lot of interesting notes from Telltale. All I'm happy is do whatever changes you need to make to make the games more profitable to ensure that the games do perform well. I'm just happy that Telltale Games is back because they have been one of the more influential game studios of the last decade. They've really influenced a lot of other games and how they present storytelling and they've shown that yes, games with lighter gameplay elements but really great stories, engaging narratives, they can be successful even though Telltale Games ultimately went defunct for a little bit. However, I think that's not an issue with the quality levels of the games. I think that ultimately was an issue with some of the other ongoings from a business standpoint and I do think a lot of that can be tightened up and I'd be shocked if The Wolf Among Us Season 2 doesn't sell well when it drops in 2021. So yes, that's still a ways away but I think that could turn out to be something really special and I'm just happy that Wolf Among Us is going to get a follow-up because that is a game that, in my opinion, that was Telltale's best. You can look at The Walking Dead. I loved Tales from the Borderlands, but Wolf Among Us, from a narrative standpoint, was on another level, and I see so much potential for that franchise into the future. And come 2021, hopefully it does do rather well. All right, moving on from that, Yakuza Like a Dragon, while the game has its skeptics, the latest gameplay trailer has been revealed, and I am liking where Yakuza is going. Now, I still have my skepticism, don't get me wrong, this is something entirely new for Yakuza, and I understand why people are a little bit unsure in how the game is going to turn out. However, the gameplay I'm seeing, it seems like they're doing this gameplay style rather well, and it does seem like they're retaining a lot of the fundamental elements and presentation elements that made Yakuza is so good. Obviously, the gameplay is a ton different, but I'm down to try something new, and what I've always talked about for those of you that are super skeptical with Yakuza Like a Dragon is, realize this, that the Yakuza Studio has been developing the same formula of a game for years now, probably what, oh, nearly two decades at this point. It has literally been that long, and from a developer standpoint, even if all of the developers haven't been on board since game one, they've been working on these games for a long time, and it's to evolve as a creator, as a developer, you need to try new things. You can't stick to the same formula over and over again, and you just can't stick to the same thing for your creative sanity. If you guys are into any creative ventures, you know that doing the same thing over and over again, at least for a lot of people, would get a little bit redundant, so they have to dip their toe into something different. And from the Yakuza team standpoint, I understand why they're going with Like a Dragon, and they've been very, very vocal of the fact that, hey, if this game doesn't turn out well, we know you guys are skeptical, but if it doesn't do good, we will go right back to the old style of Yakuza games. Let's give them a chance. I think they've earned more than that. They've done so well with the Yakuza games. Judgment was awesome. I think I can give Yakuza Like a Dragon a chance. Now, if it's not good, I'll obviously be vocal in that sense as well, but I'm just hoping for the best out of it, and I think everybody should at least give it a chance. All right, and lastly, I do want to highlight a game that saw a very quiet release on the PlayStation 4 prior to Christmas, and that is the turn-based combat zombie apocalypse roguelite Dead Age. It is dropped on PS4 for $14.99, and it notes, survive the zombie apocalypse with turn-based combat and permanent death. Manage survivors, go on dangerous scavenging runs, build alliances, craft equipment, make difficult story-influencing decisions, defend your camp against undead hordes, and experience non-linear roguelike elements in an innovative indie survival RPG. Just after the zombie outbreak, you were fortunate enough to join a group of survivors and hole up in their camp. But that doesn't set you out of danger. Food supplies are running low, injured survivors must be tended to, and materials need to be scavenged to keep the camp intact. The zombie threat increases steadily, and gains of hostile survivors keep you on the defensive. Decisions you make in conflict situations affect the story's future. You can choose to be a hero and save more survivors or let them die to stock up on supplies. You can build romance relationships with other survivors or start rivalries that may have disastrous chain reactions. The game was received relatively well on Steam, having a very positive reception on 2,968 user reviews, 84% positive. Kind of unfortunate that the game dropped at $14.99 on PSN, and right now on Steam as a part of their winter sale, the game is down to to a measly $2.99. However, that's kind of how the game is played and still gonna be a game that I think is worth checking out. Maybe add it to your wish list for now and sometime down the line pick it up then. But I really like the look of the game. Is it visually a masterclass? No, it originally did come out back in 2016, but it was going a little bit under the radar 
are, and I decided to bring some attention to it. That's gonna conclude this video. Again, based on the PSN listings leaked by GameStat, it looks like Final Fantasy VII Remake will be getting a demo, and Pat Upon 2 should be dropping on the PlayStation Store rather soon. Telltale Games might be releasing their games a little bit differently. We'll keep you guys posted on that. Yakuza Like a Dragon gets its latest gameplay trailer, and Dead Age is out now on the PlayStation 4. That's gonna conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.